Is it now visible on the screen? Yes, yes, now it is very nice. Okay, so first of all, I would like really to express my respect to U Ukraine, to Ukrainian people for this really heroic resistance against Russian troops, Russian occupation. It's really very impressive and very, very, very how to say, we are, it's very much supportive. We have very much supportive feeling in, in Lithuania. Okay, and also I'm very impressed that you are able to organize such type of conference, which is very good. It's good that you are still active, you are working, you're still keeping your activity. Okay, this is now I'm turning to my, to my lecture. I was thinking what, what to do. I was trying to prepare that. And then slowly, we now I will go just for the beginning to present about our our location, what, what is that, where we are. It's we have so-called Sunrise Valley at Vilnius. It's of course some sort of remembrance like Silicon Valley. So this is our center for physical sciences and, and technology, which is constructed by joining three university, three uh, institutes, Institute of Physics, Institute of Chemistry, and Institute of Semiconductor Physics. We created it uh, like a center for physical sciences and technology. Previously, it was like we belonged to the Academy of, of, of Sciences. Now it's independent state center. It is in the campus of uh, Vilnius University, one of the campus. Here it's shown Life Sciences Center, which belongs to Vilnius University. Vilnius University is up there. There are, and of course, it's partly physics is situated in this the, the complex of physical sciences and technology. There is modern library, so this is our campus and it's developing. So this is, I'm, I show you the Center of Physical Sciences and, and Technology. I am in the Department of Molecular Compound Physics. This is department, partly, maybe we have more people in there. So, and I have also the lab in this department, which is called Biophysics Research Laboratory. We, of course, it combines physical activities, chemistry, biology, modeling. So ma mainly spectroscopy, physical spectroscopy, we use for that, we use uh, yeah, spectroscopy methods. So it's, as you see, absorption is a real thing. It's stuff you see, light is going, color is changing. We have fluorescence. Fluorescence is three camera. We measure kinetics and spectra. We have single molecular spectroscopy, single molecular microscopy. And also we do 2D spectroscopy. 2D spectroscopy, as you see, it's real experiments done not by our by us by us we we have done with that other samples but it's like a classic classical example done in 2007 which stimulated such kind of studies very much it's you see you measure measure to the spectra changing from this to that to that there are delay in 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 in, in time and you see there are oscillations and therefore it was big 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 activities developing quantum biology field. So briefly about this 2D spectroscopy, very briefly. So if you shine three pulses in sequential three pulses, you see on the screen, yeah, some, some signals, you see the signals because three from different directions and there are echoes. So you have two pulse echoes, you have three pulse echoes. So if you stand on this stop uh, spot or this spot, three pulse echoes, you start to, so it's exactly to analyze that, analyze time delay and, and frequencies and whatever. It's exactly 2D spectroscopy. Okay, now also as uh, as I said, I, I have uh, biological research lab. So therefore, I, I go to that. What what is important? Uh, what is uh, in the in the in how the Earth is formed? Let's say. Let's say that the Earth was formed in 1st of January and this scale is up to the 31st of December. So what is that? Life emerges up to there. It's on, at, at the end of February. Photosynthesis. Photosynthesis starts in March. 
but uh, at the end of March, but it's not, not plants, plants look later. First, there are cyanobacteria, which produces photosynthesis, oxygenic, oxygenic rich atmosphere appears much later in July because of photosynthesis. Now plants, plants appeared, you see at the 6th of December, Dinosaurus, they on later at the 12th of December, they, they, they were able to appear in oxygenic uh, rich atmosphere. Hominids on th at 3 p.m. of 31st of December. You see the time scale, it's very, very big. Homo sapiens almost very close to the uh, midnight, it's uh, 11.38 p.m. It's hominis, it's homo sapiens. And finally, you see the US appeared last seconds of 31st of December. So this is the time scale. So development of the on the earth took a while, a lot a long of time to, to reach oxygenic atmosphere, to reach atmosphere where we are able to, 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 to survive, to live where we are living right now. Okay, so everything is done to done because of the presence of the sun. So sunlight is taken. So this is also explains why we are using uh, spectroscopic methods. We want to understand one of the direction to understand what is uh, what can we study about the system, but al also what light could stimulate to produce. Why it, we, it produce? What are the mechanisms of that? Of course, in addition, in our department, we are working on organic solar cells, and this is another important thing, it's, it's energy, energy. So, of course, we have plenty of, nowadays we are talking about the energy, so year, yearly energy input is up to 10 to 24th of joules, or uh, terawatts, uh, one terawatt, it's coming out. Photosynthetic organisms are using only one tenth of the per percent of this input we are reaching. We need even 10 times less. So in general, we have plenty of energy coming from the sun. Only the question is how to use it. For, for instance, currently we are using only this amount of man-made man uh, are taken from the sun. So one hour of the sun is equal to our annual demand in energy. So sun is really very important and green energy now is very actively developed. These ideas are developed in, in Europe, in, in, in everywhere, all, all over the world. So really, it's, you see, if light energy falling on the, one of the tens of the Sahara Desert and utilize with 5% efficiency, it would be enough for the global en energy demands. Okay, so it's production, really 105 billion tons per year of biomass is produced by photosynthesis or two great pyramids of laser per hour, every hour of biomass, if you, we put biomass. So it's outline of my talk. So since I, I will show you that this field, photosynthesis, pigment protein complexes, it's directly related to molecular aggregates, it's plenty of physics is in there and we can work on that to understand what's going on, how, how, the, how bacteria plants are working. And as you see, I, I, it's absorption, light absorption, because sun is absorbed, sun, sunlight is absorbed. There are coherence and incoherence. I showed you this oscillating behavior in 2D spectroscopy, polaron type, also effects could be, there are self-regulatory ability, of course, charge separation because everything is happening because you need biochemistry and biochemistry is stimulated by charge separation. And of course, then it will be conclusion. Okay, now, of course, some excitonic aspects. If we have pigments, let's say, ground state, excited state, ground state, excited state, due to the interaction we have splitting excitonic effects. And of course, dipole transition dipole moments are also summing up or subtracting them and you have different different direction. It's like an example. You see there are proteins, there are two pigments, chlorophylls. 
and they are nearby. It's from real structure, it is taken the distance, it's eight angstrom, so it's really very close. So therefore, they might be interacting and some sort of exciton effects could be present in there. So in, in terms of excitons, of course, we have sticks in the absorption, but since there, there, is, there is interaction with environment, with vibrations, with phonons and so on, of course, these bands are broadened and they are, of course, spectral density functions, beautiful data, vibrational coordinates. Okay, briefly, since it's theoretical, Institute, so I will show you some Hamiltonian. So, if we have for single molecule, we have ground state, we have excited state, we have interaction with vibration in the excited state. There are these dipole moments or dipole strengths. So, and this interaction appears because we have potentials of the ground state and excited, they, they are shifted, it's linear interaction. So, then we can turn this coordinate, electronic coordinate, uh, vibrational co coordinate um, in Heisenberg representation. We can calculate correlation functions, which I expressed here. We have a real part, imaginary part, so we have all that. So to calculate absorption life shape, shapes uh, could be calculated by using the response function. So response function is written, uh, written down here. We have dipole moments up there. The, you have to calculate this response function, first order response function. And by using cum cumulative expansion, usually in molecular systems, they are using like that, cum cumulative expansion. We have transition free, of course, this is dipole strength. We have uh, transition energy for particular molecular excitation. There are light shame, light shame, line shame functions, and there are off diagonal correlation terms. This is calculated usually calculated in terms of Redfield theory. So this is line shape functions are also related to correlation function, which is now here, and complex. So it's off diagonal fluctuation terms in term in, in, in Redfield scheme. So it's written in more general term like that. It's also correlation function if, if we have several excitonic transition or molecular transition. So Redfield is, you have to simplify, to integrate, uh, to, to simplify this integral, which is complex value. You have like rates, like Redfield terms. There are also some, some sort of modified red field, it's, which is down here. There are complex red fields, so it means you can keep this integral, which is complex. And we developed ourselves trying to, folk, to use for calculation to make it improve. some sort of improvements. We called it CTR or complex time dependent red field. So keeping like here is kind of off diagonal fluctuation time. And now I will try to show all these approximation, how they good or not good, which is better or not. And of course, I am uh, saying that our developed method is also a little bit better and we use it. So let's say we have dimer, a dimer is transition energy of one monomer is like that, is heterodimer, another is shifted, there are resonance interaction. Let's use this spectral density function uh, uh, the by type of spectral density function. This is vibrational frequencies. This is strength of interaction, electron phonon interaction. This is um, bandwidth or response, uh, re reverse values, lifetime of these correlations. So, and let's use this type of parameter and try to, to calculate. Let's say 100 reciprocal centimeters is just for, for interaction. For, uh, for interaction, uh, lambda is, there is resonance, resonance interaction, excitonic resonance interaction, also 100 reciprocal centimeters. Mm, um, oh no, it's delta, okay. And this, uh, this is strength, it's 50 reciprocal centimeters. Let's use also temperature 77K. And since nowadays there are possible to do exact calculation, of course, for some specific spectral density function by using so-called hierarchy equation of motion, 
So we can do exact calculation and compare our methods. To compare, we use like uh, quality uh, quality parameter. It means over section this hierarchy equation of, of motion and any approximation and then summing up them. This is quality parameter. And now we, we use that. Let's fix all parameters except one. For instance, strength of interaction. Spectra are shown here, calculated. Of course, there are hierarchy equations and all these approximations. And this quality shows that our CTR method gives the best approach, the closest approach, about 100%, very close to that. Let's change, let's change, start to fix other parameters and change the resonance interaction. We see this spectra variable a little bit, but yeah, but still quality parameter show that CTR method is the best. Also, we suggested that let's say in spectral density function, we have additional frequency, additional uh, resonances and shift this resonances in comparison with this excitonic splitting. Of course, this is mass of, of spectra. There are resonances shifting of these resonances. Spectra is much more complex. However, this is CTR method. It's also if, if you compare this blue and dark and uh, uh, dark, which is black. So you see, this is we, I, you should believe that this is the best, the closest approach. It's also CTR method. So the concept of of this, what does it mean? This resonance. So it means if you have spectral density of our function without this sh sharp peaks, of course, it's like incoherent processes however these peaks these resonances could make stimu could stimulate some coherence effects even in of course in Redsville scheme this part is of course of resonance this might be resonance and even in first type of of the scheme which means when you are skipping away all excitonic effect the resonance interaction are weak then these coherences could also make effect on the uphill energy transfer so, so in general, this might be important that it, this CTR at least contains, it allows us to, to do that. So what, what I'm talking about, if let's say we have many molecules, they are drawn here is ground state and excited state. Of course, by negating all these interactions with vibrations, with these phonons, we, we have this direct transition option. But if you we wait for a while or do it fluorescence measurements and so on, of course some molecules could relax, and we we have some sort of picture of more turns to become more localized. So it's really big development in terms in, in course of time, and especially by using fluorescence measurements and so on, we have to be careful about that. So to understand that, we also were working for a while to understanding what is exotonic basis or we can use also global basis to, to convert at, at the end what how it will be and indeed then Hamiltonian let's say for the dimer we have slight changes of transition energy to which were initially suggested also changes in the resonance interaction since we have a possibility to calculate we have all these approaches so really all these calculations you see dotted for different resonance interaction, different temperatures. We can approximate that. And later on in 2020, we even developed theoretically that resonance interaction really follows this type of, of behavior. It's different from pure polaronic. It's, you see, it's slightly different. It should be like that. Okay, now let's go deeper. Use Holstein Hamiltonian. Let's say that we, we want to understand how it will be going on. Let's say that we have molecules or nodes here. They are locally interacting with vibration, plenty of vibrations, phonon modes. And this is Hamiltonian, it's resonance interaction. There are strengths of local interaction with vibrations. We have bath, we have transition dipole moments. And let's use polyronic transformation or Davidov ansatz, we use it, Davidov ansatz for the wave function, plot Lagrangian and you apply variational approach. 
also like originally the window was developed that so it means we we write lagrangian in that way we write euler lagrangian equations and then we are coming to such kind of of equations we have electronic amplitude which is coupled of course resonance interaction are there but they are coupled with flotating amplitudes of with vibrations we have vibra vibrational amplitude which is coupled uh, with electronic via feedback nonlinear forces so we have this type of equations we can do, solve them and of course we can solve it and compare with how which is exact calculation so it means we want to include dynamics of the excitation in terms of time. So let's also use use several, also I will present here only for the diamond. So weak system bus conflict. So it means resonance interaction, hundreds of spherical centimeters and strength is 20. Intermediate when they are equal and strong system bus conflict. So it means we have very weak resonance interaction and strong Coupling. So, and let's use the bispectral density function. So now calculations. You see, we have Helm calculation, which are in the blue, and we have this using variational methods. And a diff we, I, I present here at different temperatures. This is weak system bath coupling, weak resonance coupling regime, and intermediate. At high temperature, of course, in all cases, you see there are oscillations. They are lasting much longer in, 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 in this our approximation in this David of using David of Andres. Or it represents these oscillations, especially at the initial time, but everything is correct. However, oscillations, the lower temperature, the bigger deviation, however, schematically everything works well. Here is more like first type, of course, at high temperatures, everything works well in all approximations. So you see, in principle, this uh, variational method works, but some details could be missing. So this oscillation, of course, they are coherent effects, which are present in there. And, and yeah, it should be taken into account. There is, it was, uh, this is um, this is uh, side basis. I present side basis, and here is excitonic basis. You see, also the same. We have these wiggles similar as here. However, um, there are, of course, in excitonic basis, it's relaxation from the high excite the excitonic state to low excitonic state. So, in principle, all these approximations are working here. Uh, it could be used. Absorption spectra, yeah. This var variational method perfectly explains absorption spectra. So it means dynamics. Dynamics, yes, there are differences, especially if you go to fluorescence, you have to be careful. However, for the absorption, yeah, we are able to, 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 to describe the system again. I do not present here not to make uh, this. This is the concept we did for large aggregates. Then we can develop and think about uh, coherence lengths. There are plenty of games around that, but I will not show that. I will go further on now to real system. Why we are talking? This is, by the way, starting from 1988, the structure of pigment protein complexes, which are present in bacteria, in plants, and so on, started to be resolved with very high precision. So, for instance, in bacteria, photosynthetic units, you see there are rings. This is so-called LH2 ring, this is LH1 ring. There are reaction centers present in there, there and structures are perfectly resolved. By the way, there are LH2, they are beautiful two rings, they are present. There are blue, it means, as you see, eight bacterial chlorophylls, and green, there, are, there is another ring which contains uh, not nine, and these 18, they are very close to each other. So on this ring, it could be really excitonic effects and all these dynamics I was talking to you about, they are, should be taken down to account and yeah, people are working on that and we were working on that as well. So once more about this um, scheme of 2D spectroscopy, once more, I show you that these three pulses are going and you take this echo 
signal and analyze this echo signal. So it's like an example of a more complex, which had been done first in 2005, then 2007. They, they, they found this oscillation. So it's FMO complex also. It's well resolved. It's shown that bacterial chlorophylls are present here. And in the dynamics, by analyzing this data, we can say where there are excitonic effects, where there is like energy transfer without excitonic effects, and, and so on. So it was like classical system. Usually, people, when uh, they are talking about 2D, it's like must to show. Uh, but I will tell now, the turn now to, to plants. Plants, it's, it's nowadays, it's very interesting, very important, and you will see, we, we will have other things. So in plants, we have, we have all, all photosynthetic unit, if you enhance in the leaves, everything is in the leaves. We have chloroplasts, they contain this, like a discs, this, they are called tylocold membranes, everything are membranes. And inside of that, there are, yeah, they are coupled and they, they have lamella connected with one, one stuck, these lumens, with, between each other. So it's like interesting structure. By the way, why I'm talking about, about plants. So plants should survive in the shade, should work, should produce, should generate biochemistry, biomass, and so on, and in, in light. So there are different conditions. It should work. And it's not so trivial to work because why? It produces oxygen and oxygen is very damaging. It could, you produce, but you have to, how to say, to, to, to survive because it's just produced that. So where it produced, it's known that in entire lipoid already I said that the structures are very well resolved. So it contains, Plants, they contain two photosystems, photosystem one and photosystem two. Photosystem two is responsible for oxygen generation. It splits water in the reaction centers and bubbles out, oxygen bubbles out. It produces oxygen in oxygen atmosphere and protons are used. All, all the process means that you create proton gradient, electron goes up there, Protons are there. Then this this electron goes through cytochrome, and also the same gradient of protons is created in photosystem one. So this electron goes there and and uh, reduces uh, this oxidized part. So, and we have then generated pro proton gradient, and this proton gradient generates all 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 biochemistry. And there are dark dark reactions. I am talking about light reactions. So the most damaging part is here, and it's really. So we know the structure, as I said. There are so sort antenna complexes, LAC2, light harvesting complex of photosystem two, it's called, it's dominating. Dominating chlorophylls are present here, it's antenna. There are additional antenna complexes, and D1, D2 are reaction centers. They are like dimeric structures, structure is known. This is LEC2, it's shown here, it contains chloroph eight chlorophyll A's, six chlorophyll B, and e there are trimeric structures, and the four carotenoids. So the search is known. What it works, if, if you go there and look efficiency of photosynthesis. So if you at very low in light, it means in the shade, energy which you are producing and light intensity, they are linear. However, at high intensity, this production of energy or mass, it deviates, it starts to deviate. So it means we have excess energy in comparison with that. So it means by increasing intensity, something happening, something dissipation mechanisms are involved in the system. And it's known that everything happens in this antenna complex in this LEC2 complex. Maybe there are discussions that maybe in some of them in C CB29, but it's like only suggestion. Here it's for sure, it works. Now the question, how it should work? For instance, we did also experiments. You, you can use uh, low at dark, 
due to dark conditions, you have no light. So fluorescence is very low because reaction centers are open. They are grabbing all, all, all energy to reaction centers. If you shine with laser very intensively, then fluorescence jumps up because you are closing reaction centers. They are not active anymore. And then in a half a minute or seconds, it drops down. Now, shine on the system. It means in light, in light conditions. Initially, of course, everything is like that. If you shine, then the light. And then all this system starts to go down, 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 down. It means on the time scale of minutes, some additional mechanism uh, appears to be involved. And another example. So, so if we have LHC2 crystals, you see in the crystal system, uh, fluor uh, fluorescence kinetics goes down much faster in, in hundreds of picoseconds, while in trimers it's four nanoseconds. So, and additional, we did also some time ago experiments in my lab. So if we use aggregates of LHC2 aggregates, so and sh shine the light on light, normal as fluorescence slowly on time scale of minutes starts to go down in even in vitro conditions. If you switch on off light, then it recovers slowly up. So it's really in LHC2 complexes, something happened, something. And one of the tasks which we were working for maybe 10 years or five years. So try to understand. It's not so trivial because it's chlorophylls. You see chlorophylls. I show the absorption spectra of chlorophylls. This is chlorophyll A. This is chlorophyll B. In the green, there is no absorption. This is blue side and red side. It's absorbed. There are carotenoids. They absorb only on the blue side. So it means here, this is why, why leaves are, are green. What kind of carotenoids? Carotenoids are lutein, neoxatin, valoxatin. They are shown here. It's also an interesting physics, interesting subject to study there. So why? Carotenoid, what, what the role about color, what we can see in the, in the, in the fall, you see that the color become uh, reddish. So it's exactly carotenoids, no, col no chlorophylls are left and they are here. So carotenoids are responsible for color changes. And even if you take uh, this, you see, you heat them, they change the color. Tomatoes, they are, have also carotenoids, why they are red. This is big, big, big story. People are talking about that, and we are also involved in that. But now, how does it work? What is the role of carotene? This is absorption spectra. They are known. So chlorophyll A, which is absorbed in the reddest part, this is so-called QI, QX transition of this so-called sodium band, so absorption in the red, this is absorption in the blue. Uh, carotenoids, they are interesting, so it's carotenoid absorbs in the blue, but they have that dark state up there. And this is big issue also. Now there are also triplet states, chlorophylls and carotenoids. If you shine the light and then everything relaxes from chlorophylls, there is about 30% of quantum yield to triplet carotenoids, so we have triplets. And because of triplet, it could generate singlet oxygen, which is damaging, destroying everything. So, but there is energy transfer to carotenoids, and it, it, if it goes to carotenoid, it doesn't generate oxygen. Energetically, it's not, not convenient. So it relaxes directly to microscope. So it means some sort of protection it's produced by the presence of carotenoids. Also, additional protection is done biochemically because every 20 minutes in general, photosystem 2 is replaced. But it's not enough. So it means we have to understand what's happening and the highlights, what's that, what kind of mechanisms could be involved. Now, therefore, we did, okay, we did systematic studies for the trimers and aggregates of these LHC2. Absorption spectra at the different temperatures from room temperature to 15 Kelvin, you see not big changes, only broadening and so on, no shift, nothing. If you compare there and there, they are the same. Now, if we excite here on the blue side, it's 
directly to carotenoid, we can measure fluorescence from LEC2. These are aggregates, these are trimers. You see, this is the main band. This is the main band, especially trimers. And of course, there is something additional appears here. Now we can analyze that. Let's say first of trimers. Let's split, split these bands, analyze everything transition frequency. And you see that at all frequencies, this is single exponential decay of the time scale of nanoseconds. Spectra are the same, it's shown here, and these kinetics are temperature dependent. If we plot now aggregates at this the, the same wavelength, you see that they are non-exponential. And if we use some sort of spectral decomposition to two components, we can say that it's time and wavelengths, so we can decompose everything into like two two bands. Something on the red side should be present. And we can analyze by using this decomposition, we can fit practically all experiments and some delays also fit. So in general, it fits total spec. So at least we can think that our aggregate, they, they contain main band and they contain red component which is also shifts to the blue with temperature. Now kinetics, on the this blue side, we have kinetics which decays much faster at different temperatures, and on this red side, much slower. We can, so it means even enhance this part, there is a delay between them, and we can start to try to understand what's going on. And also we did experiments with single molecular spectroscopy for LEC2 trimers. So you see it's shining the main band, 680 nanometers. However, time by time, it disappears. It doesn't shine. Also a main band I showed. You. But there is also, in some cases, they, sh they shine on the red side. And also there are dark, not shining. So at least, something happening in the system. So we think that in aggregate, we suggest the model that we have shining like in main conditions, conf configuration, we have red configuration and there are dark states like quenchers. And in this scheme, we can do run kinetic scheme, we can do calculations and try to explain and we fit perfectly on all temperatures this blue, all, all these kinetics on this spectrum. So it means modeling, it works, this model works. Now also we can extract, extract time scales. We can extract what are detrapping from the dark state and so on. So all parameters are taken by model. Okay, so it means also we can extract how, how many, what is the ratio or concentration ratio. So it means red, they are temperature dependent, below temperature, there are more of them. There is dark states, they are temperature independent, except of this 15 Kelvin, something is up there. Then of course, we, 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 we used, have suggestion, I would say. We did some time ago, also by mixing analysis, theoretical analysis of excitonic and charge transfer states, with strong interaction, and taking into account an harmonic environment, and this allowed us to suggest that this shift, uh, this concentration dependent and this shift to the blue could be attributed to such kind of model. So it means because there are interplay of the spectra. So red emitting state, we think, we suggest, and there were other experimental done, that there might be chlorophyll, chlorophyll interaction which generate charge transfer state. Okay, quenching state, what does it mean? It's as I showed you that well, carotenoid, they have dark states, so they might be responsible for quenching. So we think that it would be quenching state, it means energy transfer, also in specific configuration to carotenoids, which are becoming like quenchers. Okay, we can calculate, of course, efficiency. So it means if we, take different sizes, so they, their kinetics belong like that. And indeed, if we change a little bit, low light, it means our concentration of these dark states should be 4% or like that. 
then it's kinetics is two nanoseconds. If you enhance up to 10% of these uh, quenching states, everything drops exactly what is in the experiment. So here probably I'm approaching, maybe I will tell you a few words about reaction center. So reaction center by using this, um, it's a little bit different. So it means you have to overcome for electron from one uh, state to another state. So it means you have to enhance this interaction with vibrations should make to overcome this energy barrier. And of course, we have reaction centers of photosystem two reaction centers. There are chlorophylls, chlorophylls, chlorophylls. Oh, this is, ah, by the way, it's uh, of course in this phytin, which doesn't slightly different. And there are distant chlorophylls, it's structure shown here. And we suggested that this is tight binding Hamiltonian. It means we suggest this is electron in the ground state, in the excited state on the same monomer. It could be like electron moves to another monomer. So it means like charge transfer states. So we created this electron uh, generation electron, then generation hole on different monomers. We can write that. And it's known that there might be a few pathways of uh, electron transfer. It's like this or feel from this monomer and then it's like that. Or special pair pathway, this is special pair, it's another. So we said, okay, let's develop that. Is we can do calculations, we can use spectral density functions of that, we can use this our CTR method by using directly CTR method with, with the parameters which people were adjusted to the system in Redfield scheme. So then it shifts here. However, we adjusted that. You see at low temperatures, our calculations at experiment were adjusted at 77 can be adjusted and, and so on. So we, we have scheme of parameters. I don't go to the details. There are the experiments with lacking one chlorophyll. Yeah, and, I'm sorry, Professor Valkunas. Yeah, I'm, I'm finished. finished. Yeah, I'm you, just you finished. used already all your time. Yeah, so it means we, we are able to calculate 2D spectrum and you see our simulations here, new simulations are very close to the experiment. So this is my story. It means polaron formation. It's important in these schemes, and 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 charge separation. This is our. I just showed our book in 2013, written, and this is technology. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. And now Thanks. we have a few minutes for uh, questions. Please, you can just ask the question without any permission. May I ask one question? Uh, yes. Thank you. Uh, Professor Valkunas, uh, thank you very much for a very interesting lecture. Uh, there are a lot of experimental results, uh, uh, as uh, mm -hmm. I understand you obtain in your laboratory. This is very, very nice, very impressive. And uh, I just wanted to ask uh, uh, maybe uh, you know, or maybe you already did some uh, um, studies using uh, quantum uh, mechanics, uh, molecular dynamics simulations. I think this is a uh, uh, good method that may be used for uh, such kind of uh, problem. Yeah, yeah, we, you are right. I didn't mention that. We have yeah, big computer facilities. We have big supercomputers and we do molecular dynamics. We do quantum chemical calculations and now we are more concentrated towards carotenoid stories. It's especially because dark state to calculate it's very difficult because it's not single electronic approach should be used. So there is, but this is a totally another story. Yes, we are using that. Yeah. Yes. And also, by the way, recently we, we submitted, yeah, we published the paper about charge transfer state in these type of complexes. Yes, also based on quantum chemical calculation. We did. I see, I see, thank you. Okay, let me also ask a question. Uh, you presented uh, many impressive results concerning the microscopic structure, microscopic properties of all these objects. But what is about macroscopic properties? Then we need to calculate something uh, like partition function. Uh, I mean, to use statistical mechanics. So if you consider 
some simple objects like water, for example. It is very, very complicated object from the point of view of statistical mechanics. We have many different uh, phases of water and so on and so on. So I expect that in these uh, more complicated uh, systems, we have a huge amount of uh, macroscopic non-trivial properties. But uh, is it possible to, to study them within statistical mechanics? Yes, you are right. First of all, in the structure, I did, do not show the structure. Of course, water molecules, it's like separate water molecules. They are present in the structure. So this is one thing. When we do quantum chemical calculations, we take that into account, particular water. Also, there is also delta pH. So it means where protein, the protons could be adapted, uh, where situated. But also what you are saying that surrounding if we have water or not water, depending on the role of the surrounding, of course, then we, we are using, yeah, simplified. It's like open quantum system. We, we have to play here a lot. But then usually we are, how to say, parameterized that, or, but not, not, not mm -hmm. put anything. For example, let me uh, formulate my question more exact. In, in statistical mechanics, it, not only energy, but for example, entropy of the system is important. But calculate entropy, you need uh, some statistical mechanic calculations. And uh, for example, the simple question, what will be the entropy of the Earth during the evolution? Either, they const, either this quantity is constant or increase or decrease, because this is an open system, we have sun, but calculate the entropy of the Earth, uh, at least estimate. We need some uh, statistical mechanics view on this object. Yeah, you 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 are absolutely right. Right, we are not doing that. We are, but people are are doing. So at okay. least we are in, in in this field. It's big field, big big type yes, of. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, please, you have last moment to ask the question. If not, uh, let me thank again uh, Professor Walkunas for a very nice, very interesting uh, lecture. And we uh, move further.